the real part of my today lecture uh, will be the definition of inclusive scattering matrix and the expression for inclusive scattering matrix in terms of generalized green functions. Uh, uh, however, and, uh, uh, I will start with uh, something else. Uh, Albert Solomon, just a question. Uh, inclusive scattering matrix in physical terminology doesn't exist. So yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. Inclu inclusive cross section, but not inclusive yeah, scattering. Yeah, matrix. yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, uh, precisely what I would like to emphasize. Uh, the notion of inclusive scattering matrix is a new notion, and uh, uh, what is important about it uh, is that uh, it contains precisely the same information as usual scattering matrix in the case when usual scattering matrix does exist. Uh, but it does exist uh, in a much more general situation. Uh, there is uh, uh, the proof of existence of uh, usual scattering matrix uh, is uh, known only for non-relativistic quantum theory. Uh, in all other cases, uh, uh, even in simple situations, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is not known if uh, the scattering metric does exist. Uh, the only exception is, uh, uh, is uh, integrable systems in uh, the case when you have uh, uh, special uh, dim uh, dimension of uh, uh, dimension of, uh, of, of space equal to one. So, uh, so in particular, your story will be defined like for conformal field series. Yeah? So? For conformal field series, it will be certain. For conformal field series, usually scattering matrix does exist, that doesn't exist at all. Yes, yes, and it will be some, something. So this is uh, 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 not, not, not this is not necessarily true, but uh, uh, in the standard situation for, for conformal series, it's, uh, there's uh, no scattering at all. It will be something, in, so? it will be inclusive for the scattering, yeah. Well, uh, in two dimensions, you said yourself that in two dimensions uh, it's okay, right? No, for massive series. So, in the, uh, when, we see, when you have one plus one dimension, so one time, one space, uh, then. Uh, so, if we probably, when you say it doesn't exist, that, that's because it's zero due to infrared divergence. Is that probably what you mean, right? So, uh, really. Uh, when you are uh, looking at uh, uh, the scattering, then you, first of all you should have particles. Uh, uh, particles do not always exist in the series, so that it's conformal series uh, are examples. Uh, Sometimes particles do exist in conformal series, but uh, this is uh, uh, not always true. Uh, the, if particles do exist, still uh, <coughs> uh, the theory, uh, it is possible the theory doesn't have a particle interpretation, uh, which means that uh, Usually, you assume that uh, if you collide two particles, then uh, you get some mass uh, in the <coughs> after the collision, and after that, this mass uh, gives you again 
some collection of particles. Uh, but it's, uh, but uh, this is not necessarily the, in these cases. Uh, you say that the theory has particle interpretation. But nobody proved that every theory has particle interpretation. Moreover, it is, it's clear that it is not the case. And what theory doesn't have particle interpretation, for example? What theory doesn't have... So we, huh? we do not know. We do not know. So, so, okay. For conformal theories, we do know. There are no particles. In many cases. The Isaac model doesn't have one particle states. Or uh, multi-particle states. Well, uh, as it model, it's usually Euclidean theories. So no, we do, of course. Yeah, you can also. I think more in Minkowski that is. No, no, no. It's good. I mean, conform field theory in, 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 has Minkowski. Yeah, you can analytically continue to yeah. learn some kinematics. Yeah. There's still no. no. no well, uh, conformal field yes. theory in Minkowski space. Yeah, it's, well, it's well defined, yeah. It's well defined, yes. yes. Uh, and no particles. No particles. In what sense, no particles? Not in, 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 any, in, any reasonable, in any reasonable sense, uh, there are no particles in many conformities. There is no weakly coupled Lagrangian, then there is no quantized anything. There is no there sense. There is a weakly coupled Lagrangian. No, 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 no it's critical temperatures is known. Yeah. Well, uh, conformal, when you talk about conformal field theory, yeah. I'm thinking about, for example, uh, well, uh, supersymmetric young Mills. No, no, no. That no, one has no. particles. No, it's not. it has particles. But not all In this case, you have. Yeah. Like two dimensional series, not two angles. In this case, you have particles. Two dimensional theories in, uh, in, in, in the uh, Minkowski space. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. That I don't. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Conformal uh, theories. And no supersymmetry. So, and I would like to say one more thing. Uh, so, this is completely speculative. Uh, but uh, uh, we know that uh, in uh, uh, the universe uh, you have a lot of dark matter. And uh, nobody knows that this dark matter consists of particles. Simply, to, uh, maybe it yes, maybe no. Nobody knows what is it, so of course. We know that it exists, but uh, uh, but uh, why do you think that uh, it, uh, this dark matter consists of particles? Anyway, this, but this is uh, uh, this is some speculation, and I uh, uh, do not want to go to speculations. Uh, but I would like to, uh, but what what I would like to say right now, uh, start right now. Uh, is uh, not the real stuff that I would like to explain. Uh, 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 but I would like to uh, talk about what I'm uh, uh, calling geometric approach uh, to uh, quantum field theory. And this, in this geometric approach, uh, you uh, simply say that your starting point is some set of states. It, uh, it, for me, it will be uh, uh, useful to talk about a cone of states where uh, you identify uh, to states that are uh, uh, really uh, uh, different only by numerical factor. Uh, so, and what uh, uh, what I would like to say that imposing some very very natural conditions, uh, starting with a set of states. Uh, you can uh, uh, get uh, many things. Uh, in particular, you can get scattering theory. And this is easy, because uh, in this case, uh, uh, you are starting with some axioms. And uh, 
probably everybody knows uh, this uh, statement by Bertrand Russell that uh, axiomatic approach uh, has many advantages over honest work. Uh, so I would like to say that uh, I will use axiomatic approach in the first part uh, of uh, the lecture. Uh, this will be uh, definitely uh, an, easy, uh, an easy part, uh, but after that uh, one really should uh, uh, do the honest work and uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, in the second part of the lecture and then I should uh, it will be necessary to skip uh, this honest work mostly. So, but what, I, what, is, uh, what do I need uh, in uh, uh, my uh, theory to develop uh, the scattering theory? Uh, first, first of all, I need this uh, set of states, I say that it's a cone of state, which is a subset of some topological vector space or Banach space uh, in particular. And I need uh, time translations, evolution operators, and spatial translations. Uh, so that uh, together they form, they should form a commutative group. Uh, and this, uh, after that, I will uh, uh, give a definition uh, the, of elementary excitation of translation invariant stationary state. Of course, I have translation, so that's, uh, I have a notion of uh, translation variant stationary state that I will denote by omega. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, define a notion of elementary excitation of uh, such a state. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, the notion of elementary excitation uh, will be, I will formulate this uh, in the following way. First of all, I will define a notion of elementary space. Elementary space uh, is a space of complex vector valued functions that are smooth and fast decreasing, so what is called Schwarz space. Uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, defined on some d-dimensional space. Uh, spatial translations are simply shifts of the argument. Uh, and uh, Time translations are unitary operator that commute with spatial translations. Ah, so it's a Fourier transform to be multiplication by. Yeah, yes. This is this is this is, this is precisely the next uh, uh, the next slide. Uh, in momentum representations, uh, you have uh, uh, the spatial translations are multiplication by exponents. Uh, and uh, time translations, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, also multiplication by exponent by, of, of some matrix multiplied by tau, where tau plays the role of time. <coughs> and uh, I say that elementary space is admissible. Uh, if uh, this matrix uh, governing the spatial translations is positive definite. 
uh, uh, later I will explain that uh, uh, so, uh, this happened. Uh, the staff appears in uh, uh, standard business. Uh, so, an elementary excitation is by definition uh, is a map of elementary space uh, to the cone. What, what do you say? Space is vector space and cone is kind of like not vector space, it's part of vector space. Uh, cone is a part of vector space. Ah, so, in, so this cone should contain, should be containing vector, uh, whole line? Uh, ah, it's not linear. Flashing, okay. it's, it's not linear. Flashing required. Ah, it's not linear. Uh, it's linear map or non-linear map? Non-linear non non map. Non-linear map. Uh, so it really, it's, it's in standard situation, this will be a quadratic map. And I will explain this later. Uh, but uh, uh, now I'm saying seems uh, this is... Uh, that uh, uh, that uh, elementary excitation is a map of elementary space that commutes with with spatial and temporal translations, and also I, uh, required uh, some property uh, that uh, this uh, map should be up to this. Uh, uh, sigma of phi uh, can be obtained from uh, uh, this uh, uh, space uh, from this uh, state omega by uh, by action of some operator l which is not supposed to be linear with respect to phi it is linear operator but the independence of uh, phi is not really uh, linear, it, it is, uh, in good cases, it is quadratic. Yeah. So, and basically, if, uh, uh, I think that uh, at this moment, uh, 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 the, phys the physicists in this audience are lost. Uh, what does it mean? So, basically, uh, if you, if you have uh, the standard particle, then you have a particle. Uh, 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 you can you can uh, talk about a particle with given momentum. This is a function phi of p, where p is momentum. Uh, but uh, phi of, uh, this particle is given momentum is uh, something that doesn't uh, belong to Hilbert space. It is, uh, it is a non-normalizable uh, state. And therefore, to get normalizable state, you should integrate uh, this uh, uh, phi of p uh, with some test function. You may also introduce finite spatial volume, what physicists usually do. No, no, no. When you have when you have finite volume, you have do not have uh, uh, you do not have scattering. You do not have scattering. Uh, but uh, so that's of course you can uh, uh, physicists know ever uh, know how to work with finite volume and then go to infinite volume and uh, to get scattering. But uh, if you would like to uh, define scattering, you should work in infinite volume. Uh, so and basically, uh, what 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 do you have? Uh, uh, is uh, if uh, the particles still exist, then you can introduce wave packets, right, which are localized, and then uh, the scattering of wave packets. Probably it's something, well, my guess is, it's something similar to what you're going to do, right? Uh, so, uh, it's something that can be done. Okay. 
Assuming uh, that uh, this map that, that commutes uh, these uh, translations uh, can be obtained by the formula it's written here, uh, you have some map L of, L of uh, phi applied to omega, which is this uh, state that I uh, translation invariant, I consider elementary excitation of this state. And the state that you consider is not necessarily pure, so it could be mixed. The state uh, omega is, uh, the state omega is translation, is uh, invariant. It could be linear combination. So? It could be linear combination of pure state, some. Not any combination of, of, of other invariant states. No, no. Yeah. simply. Uh, yeah, it should be kind of like. Simply, uh, uh, for for example, maybe this this uh, maybe this state is uh, is a ground state, or maybe this is a equilibrium state. Or linear combinations could be a linear combination of what? Of of several ground states. Uh, yeah, of, of okay, course, yeah, but. The what the requirement is that uh, it is uh, translation. After that, I have, I have some uh, requirement that probably will be violated if you will take a uh, combination of ground states. But uh, my uh, recollection from the lecture, your lecture, which I attended, was that you define a state as not a real uh, state uh, in quantum mechanical sense, but like density matrix. So it's mixed state in what you know. Mixed yeah, state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but basically what, what I am saying, uh, basically uh, that uh, this, uh, my uh, uh, elementary excitation, which later will be quart particle or quasi-particle, uh, is obtained from uh, uh, translation variant state by means of action of some, something uh, more or less localized. I do not have any locality, but uh, uh, I impose the condition uh, that um, uh, on this uh, uh, L of C, and this uh, condition is as follows. Uh, that uh, uh, L of phi and L of psi should almost commute when support of phi and psi in coordinate representations are far away. So this is, uh, uh, of course, this is, uh, uh, should be formulated precisely. You can formulate this precisely in many ways, uh, but probably uh, uh, this is uh, not a very uh, a reasonable, a reasonable thing to do here. So basically what uh, 
I have to hear that uh, this requirement, a kind of quasi locality. Ah, pictures, so it bother you, but this analytic details, you said Schwartz space, yeah, see infinity functions and so on, yeah. And, 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 uh, so, uh, let, uh, let me ask you to repeat your question a little bit later. Then, okay. then it, <laughs> probably it, this question will disappear. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, this is, uh, uh, so this, uh, I formulated some axioms, some definitions, even not, not axioms, some definitions. Uh, now, uh, uh, this is the definition of elementary excitation. Uh, if uh, you have positivity, uh, so the, the, if elementary excitation of ground state is a particle by definition, elementary excitation in as all other cases should be considered as quasi-particle. Uh, in relativistic theory, you should have Poincaré group and your uh, state omega should be Poincaré invariant, and uh, uh, Poincaré group should work and uh, should uh, act in uh, elementary space. Uh, but uh, the, all this stuff is un completely unnecessary. In the definition of uh, scattering, you do not need Poincaré invariance. Uh, but if uh, you have Poincaré invariance, then the scattering matrix will be Lorentz invariant. So, now... I have a question. So yeah? You were working in this finite dimensional space of uh, states. Uh, is it finite dimensional or infinite dimensional? Because I thought there are no like finite so dimensional unitary representations. Uh, you have uh, this uh, elementary space. Uh, it consists of functions on finite dimensional space. So itself, it is, no, no, itself it is infinite dimensional. Yeah. No, Rd it's, it's, it's kind of space in space time. Yeah. So Rd. This is space, not space time. Space. Yeah. And functions is very was R to power c to power R, which is kind of like space. Yeah. Space, space. Mm -hmm. So, and I, the, the next thing that I would like to say is, is a couple of words uh, uh, about uh, this uh, uh, time evolution in these elementary spaces. These are more or less trivial stuff. Uh, so, basically, uh, uh, if you have uh, some uh, let us suppose that you have uh, uh, some function uh, phi, uh, which is uh, uh, <coughs> which has uh, a compact support in momentum space. Uh, so after Fourier transform. Uh, so then. So you have this open set of subset of what? So you have the, so look, uh, you ha you have here. Uh, 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 you have uh, uh, you take uh, this uh, uh, this uh, nabla, which is gradient of uh, of a function. Uh, so this will be a d-dimensional space, yeah. It's will be coordinate space. Uh, so yes, this is uh, uh, no. Uh, this is uh, the space U is in momentum space. No, when you the gradient of function, like yeah. you don't have metric. The gradient belongs to the dual space. Yeah, 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 but uh, but I have, uh, uh, but uh, uh, you, you remember that I uh, uh, wrote that I uh, have uh, inner product in the space. Uh, uh, no, inner product, it was uh, not in RD. You have inner product in, uh, in CR and volume element maybe in RD. 
Yeah, uh, you have uh, uh, you have inner products in the space R D. Uh, it's, it's in the space in D-dimensional space. It's yes. a bit strange. No, you don't use it for anything. Uh, so? You don't use it for anything. Again, this has one scalar group. You, maybe you need it, but a, a priori you, you don't need it scalar product at all in R D. Uh, yeah, but uh, I required I required the existence of inner product. Yeah. Why? Uh, but it's not used in, in, in your formalism at all. Uh, so the uh, not uh, really, uh, not, uh, it, it is it is used. No, but uh, anyway, this uh, okay, doesn't yeah, matter. Uh, doesn't matter. It is, okay. Uh, yeah, but it's subspace of R D. You have this is subspace of R D. Of, uh, uh, so and, uh, and uh, basically, uh, uh, this space, uh, 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 this uh, the set, uh, is uh, the set that governs uh, uh, the uh, evolution, the time evolution of uh, my uh, function uh, in uh, coordinates. Representation. When when you are working in coordinate representation, uh, then uh, uh, you should consider. Uh, uh, we, we started with uh, we started with uh, momentum space f of p the function. Uh, then you go to coordinate space, uh, take Fourier, and to the, after that you multiply by. Uh, uh, some exponent, uh, depending on time. Uh, and when you are trying to look uh, at the support uh, of uh, this function shifted in time uh, in uh, coordinate representation, uh, you see uh, that uh, uh, the essential support uh, of uh, this function uh, uh, is uh, precisely uh, the set that uh, uh, I did denoted by u phi multiplied by tau. So that's uh, uh, basically uh, so, so it's sort of kind of growing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's basically when you have, uh, uh, so let us say, if you have some uh, uh, function phi, uh, which is uh, uh, non zero, has supported uh, uh, in the momentum space and small piece of momentum space, uh, then uh, uh, what is uh, what do you see at in the, in the level of uh, stationary phase methods? Uh, that everything is moving with velocity equal to nabla of epsilon. Uh, so and uh, uh, you will have the support of uh, your function uh, concentrated. It's in uh, uh, in some set tau multiplied by u by u, yeah. uh, and uh, outside of this uh, uh, set, your function will be very small. And there, there is an estimate written here that uh, shows that it will be it will be. Uh, it will, uh, go down uh, uh, faster than any power of x and tau. Uh, so that's... Uh, so, okay. Uh, but now, uh, I say what I'm saying, uh, that uh, I'm saying the two function do not overlap functions in so my elementary space do not overlap 
if corresponding sets u, sets of velocities, do not overlap, and then the essential supports of uh, uh, in coordinate space of functions that are obtained by means of uh, uh, temporal translations, uh, they will be far away. And this field, it follows that uh, uh, the separators, but uh, this Operators L that I introduced, that are more or less local in some sense, uh, they will almost commute for these functions. Of course, of course, this is a little bit uh, of hand waving here, but uh, it is easy to make this uh, completely precise. So, and now. I will define a notion of, uh, of including scattering matrix in this geometric approach. And this is very easy. And moreover, it is very easy to prove that this inclusive scattering matrix does exist. Uh, but uh, of course this is, uh, in a sense, this is, uh, I'm cheating. I am assuming something, and uh, from this assumption I can derive uh, everything that I need. Uh, but uh, uh, later it will be necessary to prove that in physical situation that uh, this happens. Uh, but here, by right now, it's, everything is very simple. So I will introduce, uh, I have this operator L that generates my, uh, uh, my uh, states, uh, my elementary excitations from omega. Uh, and I am uh, uh, sh shifting uh, this uh, argument by some time. And after that, I uh, uh, am using the time, uh, time translation. Uh, it is uh, really uh, conjugation with operator of time translation when you are working, then you are working, uh, acting on operators. Uh, so I have some operators L of F tau uh, defined by the formula on this slide. So? The, the last term of the formula doesn't make sense. No, uh, so, uh, there is a bracket uh, that should be removed here. And then, then it doesn't coincide with the middle so? term. <laughs> so, so, no, completely no, uh, no, no, no. If you look on the formula, if you even put bracket on the end, you, you get a, a bit of contradiction because you get. Yes, yeah, so this is. Uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, this this formula that's uh, this maybe middle uh, term should be. So, yes, the last term doesn't fit with this middle term. No, no, that's uh, this. Uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, what I'm writing here. This is a conjugation with. Uh, uh, remember that. Uh, then conjugate L of F, not of F. Yeah. No, because this is, uh, first, of, first of all, I shift the argument, yeah. and then I take conjugation. This is, uh, uh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, uh, one, one bracket should be removed from here. Uh, so, but uh, uh, then it is very easy to check. Uh, that when you act by this operator on the set omega, on the, on the, on the state omega, uh, then, the, then uh, the dependence on tau disappears. 
uh, so uh, look what uh, uh, let me go back. let me go back uh, I apply the stuff to Omega uh, then uh, this uh, uh, the last factor uh, disappears because omega is uh, in very stationary and after that I have uh, commuted uh, I, I have uh, a commutation relation my uh, uh, elementary states commutes with translations and so that uh, by trivial calculations uh, I will have this uh, uh, stuff that L doesn't depend on tau. Okay, and after that, I will uh, define inclusive scattering matrix as some limit. So I have here. Uh, state omega, which is translationally invariant. In dual space, I will take state alpha. And I have uh, uh, this operators L uh, that are uh, really uh, uh, they, they depend on tau and tau prime, uh, and I will take uh, tau prime tending to plus infinity, tau tending to minus infinity, some formal operations. And this uh, limit is by definition inclusive scattering matrix. And I can explain why this is an inclusive scattering matrix, and I can explain why this limit does exist. And this is, uh, maybe it's the simplest thing to do is to consider the limit when tau tends to minus infinity first, and then uh, it will be uh, the definition of what is called in-state. And so that's, uh, and basically, of course, I cannot uh, give uh, precise proof uh, in, the, in uh, this. Uh, in this lecture, uh, but basically what happens? Uh, you would like to uh, prove that these limits do exist. Uh, you have the dependence of tau, and uh, say it depends on tau. Let me let, let me prove the dependence of tau and, uh, the limit of, uh, with respect to the, when tau tends to minus infinity does exist. Uh, what will I do? How will I prove this? Uh, the proof is very simple. Uh, I, sh I, I will differentiate my expression with respect to tau, and I will prove that the, the derivative is uh, small. The so tau tends to infinity. The, the, it's sufficient to prove that the derivative uh, uh, is absolutely integrable. And why it is integrable? Uh, because uh, uh, from, from my, I, I assume basically uh, that for large tau, uh, my operators L almost commute. So I can interchange them. But so I, uh, so I, uh, so, and then I can take any any uh, of these operators, and I can shift it to the rightmost position. And in the rightmost position, so you have the sorry, I have the sorry, I, uh, 
uh, did not say that uh, uh, it violated this rule, of course, and I have uh, the, uh, one of this uh, I differentiated with respect to time, and in every expression I have one of this uh, uh, one of this uh, operators uh, coming with derivative, with time derivative. And uh, this operator with time derivative, I move uh, moving to the right, and then the right it gives me zero. So uh, sorry, I uh, uh, do not want to go to the in detail to this stuff. Uh. I wanted to ask. So let me see if I understood physically what you're doing. So you're choosing some states at t equals zero which are these g's and g primes, which are like ordinary, like elementary excitations, as you said, some particles. Yeah. Then you're conjugating that with the time evolution operator. Yeah. And then you're se sending these states sum to minus infinity, sum to plus infinity. Yeah, so basically what, what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm using, this my particles, they go far away. And so therefore I... Uh, uh, basically, when I consider uh, the behavior as now tends to tending to infinity, I should I can look at one of them. Uh, How do you know that these are still like one particle states? Uh, because I, because I made an assumption. I really uh, uh, let me go to the to the next uh, slide. Yeah, but but it's the thing it's the same it exists. You assume that uh, the supports of Fi in nonempty space are separated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the the important thing is that uh, uh, basically in my business I have uh, separated particles. Uh, so that's uh, let me go to next to the next slide. It, it will be uh, more or less. Uh, uh, so that's basically I take uh, tau uh, tau ten tending to minus infinity, tau prime tending to plus infinity. That's uh, basically uh, uh, I will uh, consider only tau tending to minus infinity, and then uh, what do I have? Uh, I assume uh, that f that functions that I uh, considered here uh, they do not overlap, which means that uh, basically precisely this, this uh, I, I have this uh, particles moving far away. Uh, so uh, so that's. Uh, uh, is this precisely the issue when you have infrared, certain kinds of infrared divergences? So, like, for instance, quantum electrodynamics. Well, uh, this uh, quantum electrodynamics is a separate thing. Okay. Uh, but what I'm talking now, uh, uh, is, uh, today, uh, is uh, basically the case when you have a gap, when, uh, when you have, uh, uh, you will see this uh, in a moment. Uh, so, but uh, uh, but uh, morally the same is true in quantum electrodynamics, but uh, only morally. Okay, so this is for this situation. There's still an ordinary scattering matrix. Uh, this is uh, no, this is inclusive. I, I Let, uh, this is inclusive, but what? if you have a gap, uh, so, then, then you're assuming that. Uh, there's, so, like, so that's. Uh, 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 please uh, wait for a moment. Okay. Sorry, you say inclusive, but what does it include? So, so let me so so, 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 so I, I will explain. Okay. Uh, so look, what happens here? Uh, uh, so that's uh, first of all, uh, I made this assumption that my functions that I, I wrote here. Uh, they do not overlap, uh, so that uh, means that operators, they, they almost commute. Uh, and then, uh, so the, I already covered the slides uh, when I uh, uh, 
uh, gave this pseudo proof of the statement. Uh, so, but uh, uh, but what I would like to uh, say uh, right now, I would like to explain why this stuff is an inclusive scattering matrix. It is not standard scattering matrix. But first of all. I will, let me look uh, at the limit when I uh, take uh, uh, tau tending to minus infinity. When tau tends to minus infinity, uh, then uh, it is uh, uh, simple formal calculations. Uh, so uh, they show that uh, if I take this in state uh, that are denoted by lambda f1 fn minus infinity, and I take, uh, I apply this temporal shift, shift in time, then formal calculations uh, give me the following statement uh, that. Uh, uh, this is the same as uh, uh, to evolve this wave functions in time. So basically, uh, the if functions uh, uh, f1, fn do not overlap, uh, then uh, this uh, in state basically uh, it. Uh, uh, defines uh, a collection of particles that are distant for uh, tau tending to minus infinity. So this is really what is called in-state. So, well, I look at the formula uh, just in the lower half of the slide, and now probably I understood what was wrong with the formula Maxim asked about. Yes. Yes. That, uh, 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 please ask your question. Please ask your question a little bit later. Okay? Just one bracket was redundant there, right? Please ask, please ask the question later. But right now, I'll, uh, let me uh, give. Uh, uh, so, what, 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 what I'm doing here by this inclusive scattering matrix? Uh, basically, what I'm doing here, I take an in state. And I take an average of some operators, of some out operators. I do not assume that at the end I will get the particles. But I assume that I can calculate something at the end of the story. Uh, so some energy can go, sir. For example, in physics, some energy can go to something else, not to part. Uh, so this, uh, so what? What I'm saying, uh, what I'm trying to uh, uh, to calculate, I'm I'm taking a st in state. I consider evolution of this state when tau tends to plus infinity, and I calculate something at the limit of plus infinity. For example, the, the, if, uh, uh, so, okay, uh, let me, uh, uh, the, the best, uh, a good picture is uh, to, uh, uh, to assume that we are doing not with uh, quantum particles, but with solitons. You are taking solitons, uh, you have uh, a kind of uh, mess in the middle. After that, you get something that consists of solitons or, or, or something else. But what can you do? Uh, the, you, you always can calculate, uh, say, the number of uh, some integral uh, that is uh, not equal to zero uh, when you have uh, some uh, solitons. 
so this is uh, you should not uh, the, the the difference between inclusive stuff and uh, uh, usual scattering matrix is that in usual scattering matrix you assume uh, that the very, at the very end you have some particles. And here I do not assume this. I simply calculate something that would be uh, equal to the uh, number of particles if uh, uh, there were uh, particles there. Also in the initial state, you, you don't necessarily have only particles, right? Because you're specifying so, your state at So I have, I have I, I need the state, I, 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 I look at the state at infinity plus infinity. I look at it. I do not assume that, 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 that there, are, that, that there are some uh, uh, particles there. You, you assume there are particles at some time, like before you take the limit, you prepare some state that only has particles, right? At Your in some states are particles or not necessarily particles? Your uh, so I assume that uh, the, 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 the particles uh, assume that there are particles from the very beginning. I collide some particles, and, and after that, particles. I do not assume that I have I have particles. But it seems that your definition is symmetric between no, 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 in no, and no. out, because you're taking the limit. No, those are something called alpha. So wow. let uh, so okay. Let me uh, maybe it, it is uh, so. Uh, what uh, what I'm saying, uh, talking right now about is what is this geometric approach that where uh, uh, more or less uh, everything uh, uh, very is very simple, but uh, uh, this is cheating. Uh, this uh, Bertrand Russell thing. But now, but now let, let, let me uh, suggest that, that uh, now I would like to uh, have a break. So uh, geometric approach is something that I invented several years ago. But algebraic approach was invented uh, many, many years ago. Uh, uh, almost 100 years ago. Quantum mechanics is uh, less than 100 years uh, old. Uh, but uh, uh, already in uh, the beginning of searches, uh, I think that uh, algebraic approach was, was, was already known. So in this, uh, in the algebraic approach, what do you have? Uh, you have uh, an algebra of observables. It's uh, maybe uh, better to say simply an algebra uh, with involution. Uh, and uh, in uh, this, uh, if you have a state, uh, you have, uh, uh, it defines a linear functional on, uh, of observables, uh, say, omega of a. Uh, but uh, not every linear functional of observables uh, is uh, allowed uh, to be a state. Uh, you should consider, uh, uh, should impose condition of positivity, uh, which is simply that omega of a star a is greater or equal than zero. Uh, so, uh, so uh, algebraic approach is less general than uh, the geometric approach, uh, because in algebraic approach you can uh, define the scone of, of positive uh, functionals. 
uh, and uh, you can start with uh, all the stuff. Uh, so, uh, uh, then uh, uh, there is uh, an obvious remark that if you have a representation of the algebra of observables in uh, uh, standard, uh, uh, then uh, you have uh, uh, you can uh, construct this. Uh, states. So, for example, if you take as an algebra of observables what mathematicians call Weyl algebra, Weyl algebra is uh, the algebra where representations are uh, representations of canonical commutation relations. And then uh, uh, when you have infinite number of degrees of freedom, then you have many, many representations, many, many Hilbert spaces, and uh, the, every Hilbert space con con contains some states that are vectors or density matrices in these Hilbert spaces. Uh, so, and there is a theorem that every state uh, can be obtained from some representation, from some Hilbert space. Uh, physicists work always, almost always, in Hilbert spaces, and they have, can do this because of this theorem. You always can uh, represent a state by a state in the Hilbert space. But you have many of them, many Hilbert spaces. And this is uh, a theorem uh, that belongs to Gilfant, Neimark, and Siegel. Uh, and this is uh, uh, what is called uh, GNS construction. For every state, you can find a Hilbert space when, where this space state is located as a vector. So, and then uh, you do not have any problems uh, with definition of elementary excitation this definition of uh, particle uh, that, uh, as I said that uh, you should have a particle for every momentum you have a particle should have a particle for every test function and uh, then uh, you have uh, the following picture uh, that this uh, phi of phi, uh, phi of f can be obtained from uh, uh, this uh, vector theta corresponding to state omega by means of some operator. It's not linear dependent on f. So? Now it's linear dependent on f, yeah? No. It depends linearly on f. Yeah? Uh, you can uh, be of f, uh, uh, you can take its uh, linear, linear dependence of f, yeah. You can take it this way. So that's... Uh, 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 so this is uh, uh, something that uh, I think Andrei should can accept. Yeah, I postpone my question. Sir? I postpone my question. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then, 
uh, then uh, you can more or less repeat all the stuff uh, that I uh, uh, talked about in uh, uh, geometric language, in this algebraic language. Uh, but here uh, you can uh, derive uh, the property that I needed from asymptotic commutativity. Asymptotic commutativity is, uh, means as follows. You have the, if you have two elements of algebra, you shifted one of these elements in special direction and in time direction, and the commutator then should be small. It should be uh, tends to zero faster than any power of x, uh, and dependence of uh, time should be at most polynomial. So that's, and from, and then, uh, you, really, you really can uh, define the in-state. Uh, that's uh, in-vector, better to say, because in-state already defined as a state. And here you will have in vector. That, uh, and you can define uh, Miller matrix or half, uh, one half of scattering matrix as uh, a map of asymptotic state to uh, this Hilbert space. Uh, you are uh, basically uh, this, uh, in vector and uh, uh, mirror matrix is more or less the same stuff that's which, which uh, uh, the last line on the slide uh, gives you a relation between mirror matrix and in state. Okay, so then you can define two Miller matrices with plus infinity and minus infinity. And then you can define the scattering matrix. But you should remember the scattering uh, that's uh, uh, this Miller matrix is not necessarily a surjective map. Not, uh, it, is, uh, it is highly non-trivial statement uh, that, uh, uh, if, that every state can be represented as asymptotic state can be got to, can be obtained for some asymptotic state. Basically this means that, uh, 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 that uh, when you start with any initial data, then at the very end, at uh, plus infinity or at minus infinity, you have particles. This is not necessarily true. Uh, but if this is true, then you can define the scattering matrix. And uh, moreover, uh, you can define in operators and out operators. Uh, 
so basically, what are in operators and out operators? Uh, you have uh, creation and uh, creation and annihilation operators in asymptotic space. And if you have If you have surjective Noether matrix, if you have particle interpretation, then you can define an uh, in and out operators uh, that get uh, that are obtained from creation and relation operators from in an asymptotic space. So, so, and what, uh, now what uh, uh, can you do? Uh, first of all, uh, in, this uh, in this situation, when you have particle interpretation, then you can uh, express uh, this uh, uh, scattering matrix in terms of uh, green functions. What's a green function? A uh, green function is uh, uh, this is an average value, an expectation value of uh, chronological product. Uh, so, so this is uh, at, uh, and you can express scattering matrix in terms of asymptotic behavior of green functions in P P T representation. So really, uh, what uh, what I define when I defined a green function, uh, then uh, uh, I uh, it, it dependent on coordinates and uh, times. I can uh, take a Fourier transform with respect to coordinates, and then I get. PT representation. Well, or I can get also Fourier transform uh, for uh, uh, the time uh, variable. Then this will be P epsilon representation, where epsilon stands for energy. Uh, so, and uh, it is. Uh, easy to check uh, that uh, scattering matrix can be expressed in terms of either of asymptotic behavior in PT representations or in terms of poles in P epsilon representations. Uh, so and, uh, this, uh, this is a very well known stuff. Uh, and this is about uh, uh, this is about uh, uh, usual scattering matrix. However, uh, let me go to geometric approach. What happens in geometric approach? In geometric approach. Uh, uh, you will have uh, the following thing. Uh, you have uh, this linear formula for phi of f in terms of operator b. Uh, but now I would like to go to states. States, uh, they behave like density matrices. They are quadratic. And so, you can, uh, basically, what uh, uh, now 
uh, what uh, can I do? I can express this. Uh, uh, now the separator fell that I uh, took as uh, an axiomatic approach uh, for uh, in ge in geometric picture. Now they are quadratic expression in terms of operators B. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, you can see more or less immediately uh, that uh, uh, this uh, operators L will satisfy uh, the formulas that I uh, uh, assumed, uh, 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 they will be. Uh, uh, you take can take them quadratic with respect to f, or better to say Hermitian. And now look, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, look, uh, in the algebraic approach, uh, you see uh, that uh, uh, this limit from tau tending to, in to plus infinity, remember that I have uh, a limit for tau, uh, uh, tau tending to minus infinity that gives that gave me the in state, and but when I take tau uh, limit for t, uh, tau plus infinity, I will see that uh, really. Uh, uh, this uh, limit will be expressed in terms of uh, uh, quadratic expressions of operators A out and A out conjugate. This will be quadratic expressions. This will be, uh, at, uh, so basically what uh, uh, will be uh, in, in some sense, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you get? Uh, you will get inclusive cross-sections in some, in some limits. Because inclusive cross-sections are basically, there are average of, uh, uh, of a star multiplied, A out star multiplied by, of, of, of momentum multiplied by A of momentum. So this is uh, uh, basically uh, a big, uh, there, is, there is a big difference. I do not assume they exist that, 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 that at, at the very end. I will give. Uh, I will have this uh, uh, collection of particles. But if I have this, then taking, uh, then taking uh, uh, expectation value of a star out multiplied by a out, I will get. Inclusive cross sections. Uh, so that's uh, 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 this is uh, the first thing that I wanted to say. The next thing uh, that I want to say that uh, again I can express the stuff in terms of uh, green functions, but uh, generalized green functions. What, is the, what are generalized green functions? Uh, they are uh, uh, 
usual, usual green function is expectation value of chronological product. You, take a, you can take expectation value of anti-chronological product. Uh, but this uh, doesn't matter, this simply conflict conjugate stuff. But now you can take the following thing. You can take expectation value of chronological product multiplied by anti-chronological product. And this is uh, uh, this will be will give some generalized green functions. Uh, so and they uh, appear naturally in non-equilibrium statistical physics and Keldish formalism, and also they appear in the formalism of L functionals that I uh, described in one of previous lectures. So, uh, you can uh, really uh, generalize this a little bit. Uh, you can take uh, also uh, 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 chronological product and anti-chronological product, and you can take uh, some element translation variant element of algebra. Uh, between the, uh, them, and then this will be another realization. And this will be with, with this, uh, remember that I uh, 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 described uh, scattering matrix dependent on two guys of omega and some guy dependent on alpha. That alpha in the algebraic approach can be taken and as uh, uh, an element of the algebra of observables, uh, but uh, in the uh, simplest cases will be alpha equal to one unit element of algebra. Then I will get. Precisely, Keldersh gate functions. Uh, otherwise, I will get one more generalization. But anyway, uh, the uh, result is as follows: that if you have, first of all, you can give a proof of existence of inclusive scattering matrix. This is the first, uh, at least in the case when you uh, do not have, uh, the, you have a gap in the spectrum, when you have asymptotic commutativity, which is strong asymptotic commutativity. Uh, you can, then, you can find out, uh, you can uh, uh, make, uh, you can derive the Feynman diagrams for this generalized uh, green functions and hence for inclusive scattering matrix. Uh, so if uh, this is uh, uh, the thing that I uh, uh, wanted to say without some uh, uh, additional uh, assumptions, if you have a gap in your theory. If you, but uh, basically, uh, in quantum electrodynamics, it seems that you have a very similar situation. However, uh, this some 
caveats. Uh, and also, uh, the last thing that I would like to say that uh, I uh, uh, required the existence of uh, time translations, spatial translations, uh, in uh, all this business. It is uh, really not quite necessary uh, to have a com complete uh, uh, set of translations. It is, supposed, it is possible to consider latest series when you have only discrete uh, group of translations uh, in space and maybe even in time. And, uh, and all, the, all of the stuff can be generalized uh, to this picture also of, uh, of lattices. Uh, so that's, and this is the end of my today lecture in the lab. So,